Come on, Nelly. And uh, she prepared the, whatever it is, leg wax, I suppose you call it. And uh, Phoenix here jumped into it and um, got covered in leg wax. And oh, the main thing I was worried about was I thought whether we'd get full thickness burns of the skin here. But when you think about it, it shouldn't be that hot uh, because otherwise it would burn the lady's legs. So what treatment are you going to give it for that? Well, first of all, I thought I might be able to clip it off, but that's impossible. Uh, then I wrapped my brains to think what we can do to dissolve it. And we, we've used surgical spirit, which seems to work a bit because it was all up his legs. Oh, it's an awful feeling, isn't it? Yeah, well, mm. you wait till you feel your hands now. his tummy. Your hands will feel really sticky. Uh, so what we're going to like do... like elastic. Yeah. What we're going to do is to spray him with some spirit and massage it, and then washing up liquid and massage it again, and then see whether, after shampooing him, whether that will soften it up and get it off. You come around. Yeah. Let's, let's get some of this stuff on it. I'll hold him. You can hold on to his back end, Rolf. Yep. There we are, Phoenix. Yes, yeah, good boy. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Just, uh, this is just washing up liquid. Mm. Yes. We tried swore fever on it. And that didn't Ooh, work. Good boy. It hey? seems like a combination of uh, surgical spirit and washing up liquid is the good way forward. Boy. It's okay, Phoenix. Come yeah, on now, puss. Yeah. There we are. That's it. There we are, Phoenix. Let's give it a little rinse. We'll do a good rinse now and yeah. then we'll be done for the okay. And then we'll have another go tomorrow morning. Put on your arm. Oh, well, she doesn't get bite you. Good boy. All right. There we are. There we are. Here he is looking much better. The fur is lovely. He's delighted to see his owner. Annabelle, how did it happen? Well, he came running down the stairs and all I could hear was sticky. Stickiness, you know, him sticking to the floor. And um, I'd realised straight away that he had, you know, he had fallen into the wax. I quickly picked him up and stuck him into the sink and tried to wash it off, but um, wouldn't come off. It wouldn't come off. Well, you did the right thing. Raced him in here. He's looking yeah. great, isn't he? Thrilled yeah. to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As our vet David Grant said, it was a most unusual case for him, and he wasn't the only one to face a challenge this week. Jeremy Stewart was also presented with a surprise package. Well, one of them's not been able to fly for a few months now. I thought right. it was the flight feathers, but... Right. And the other one yesterday, just suddenly for no reason, can't fly. Stop flying as well? No. Mm. Falling to the floor. So they're trying to fly yeah. and, uh, and crash can't. landing. <laughs> Let's have a look at them. Um, what are they called? Bugs and Angel. So, three and a year and a half, is that right? Yeah. Let's have a look. Tries to fly, but can't really cope yeah. with that. Oops. Oops. Thank you. Mm. Mm. And so they're sort of attempting to fly, and then they just go yeah. down to the corner. Really, it's strange because they were both such good flyers. And they're both eating OK, are they? Yeah, they're eating fine. Right. Um, he keeps fluffing himself up as well. This yeah, so notice that. He, cer oh. he certainly looks a little bit... Uh, more depressed than uh, than Angel here, and feeling over the uh, the tummy where where all the uh, the, f the flying muscles are, yeah. then you can certainly feel that uh, she's a lot uh, plumper um, than than he is. So he stopped flying first. Yeah. Yes. Do they do they drink normal amounts? Yes. Have you notice that? Yeah, they're drinking and eating fine. Yeah. The fact that they they both stopped flying. Would would make me wonder whether there's there's something that's affecting uh, the both of them. I uh, so maybe something infectious or maybe something to do with the environment. It's difficult to know exactly what's going on. It would probably be advisable to put them both onto um, some medicated seed to make sure it's not uh, um, a bacterial infection that uh, that is is causing this. Yeah. He's certainly more af more affected. And, yes. you can and this is obviously quite a classic reaction when they puff themselves up like that. Oh yeah. But, what so does that mean? Well, but they tend to do that when they're just not feeling terribly well um, and they sort of uh, don't want to be disturbed. They fluff the feathers up and, yep. uh, and sort of sit there with their, their shoulders hunched. And Sounds like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I, I, think, I think probably the answer is, is going to be some medicated seed. Let's, let's try them on some, on some seed for, for a week and see, see how they get on. OK. OK. Lovely. <laughs> Last week we followed a poor cat that had been involved in a road traffic accident. He had a chest hemorrhage 
and was in deep shock. At the time, vet Barbara O'Malley felt that it was touch and go for him. Well, I'm afraid he died suddenly in the night at the end of last week. His injuries were just too severe. It's a very sad, lovely cat. Fortunately, we've had more good news than bad. You'll probably remember a dog called Lady who came in last week. Did you want her to have pups? Yeah, I don't mind, but after that, I wanted to be... Spayed. Yes. Well, she is pregnant. i tell you that. Do you, and do you know how many... Oh, Can you no, tell how no, many it's well, going to be? I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, this week, Lady and her owner were celebrating. This morning, my daughter screamed out, Mummy, Mummy! Lady's had a puppy. And so I ran out here, there was only one, you know? Then I saw another one, and another one. I couldn't believe it. And I started to cry, because <laughs> I, I was so happy. It's just I was happy, you know? I just started to cry. I'm going to keep them for a while, and then find some good homes. A few of the neighbours have asked already. So, if they're up to it, then maybe, maybe I won't. <laughs> but I'm definitely keeping one for myself. I'm keeping the second one. The greedy one, the one that makes the most noise. In fact, there were six pups in all. Not that you could see that amongst all those legs. This hospital is here to look after city pets. And the nearest we get to farm animals is the odd goat or orphan lamb like this little fella here. But the RSPCA inspectors have to deal with all sorts of animals. One part of their work, which is very high profile at the moment, is checking live animal transporters. Steve Knight went out with inspectors John Storey and John Bow. Yes. <laughs> We're at junction 23 of the M25, which is the junction of the M25 and the A1. It's quite a busy interchange, and we're hoping to stop any live animal transportation that comes through or past here. It's a multi-agency approach. We've got uh, several different uh, units of the police, and we've got trading standards, and we've got ourselves, and hopefully we'll be able to cover any offences that we, we, we might find. The first object of their attention was a lorry carrying pigs. One, one over the far side lying down. Well, it's, it's off its own quarters. I don't know whether it's just sitting down or whether it won't. What are you doing there, John? What we're trying to do is just measure the length of the partition. Uh, pigs have got to be kept within a certain distance. And it's obviously quite a, a permanent partition, so I expect it to be quite right. This is a fairly well constructed wagon. It's got all the partitions. There's no sharp projections or anything sticking out. It's got good internal lighting. We just want to get him on his way now as soon as possible, not hold him up. They weren't only interested in large lorries, but anything with a live animal on board. Okay, can we just look at the horse? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. What's the problem with the horse? Next was a Dutch lorry driver who'd been stopped before. Paper Most documentation, papers for the animals. You're empty. You can have a quick look. Why has this particular one been stopped? This one was pulled over because the driver uh, of that vehicle is actually due in court in Dover Magistrates uh, later on next week uh, for contravening transit regulations. We just pulled him over to see what he had on board today. As it happened, he didn't have anything. It's empty. Uh, it's empty at the moment, but it's going to be uh, filled with field cars later on to go, to go to the continent. Yeah. You've got a load on. Yeah. <laughs> a four-decker trailer was packed with 400 sheep. There's probably too many on there for them to, to sort of stand properly. Certainly. 400. There's one, two, three, four. Well, the pay worth apparently agrees. It's not overcrowded from a point of view of sheep to floor area. What does concern us a little bit is the height with regards to where the ramps are. For loading, this is four tiers high. And all the ramps are suspended from chains. And because of the trailer's age and the amount of use it's had, the trains have stretched. So the bottom ramp is also restricting the height for the, the sheep to stand in. This is also a fairly good example of a tattyish trailer. I mean, you can see where it's been welded here and had patches on. He's getting um, a defect notice from the trading standards. There's a couple of bits and pieces around it that aren't quite an offence, but will be maybe in 500 miles time. 
but the police had noticed a more pressing problem. The police have found a, a leaking diesel tank and normally they would put a prohibition order on the vehicle not to be moved until it was fixed. Obviously this is causing concern because we have to either unload the animals or let the, the vehicle carry on on its way. So we're just finding somewhere where we can unload the sheep and then the, the police are going to come back to us in a minute and say what they want to do. While the authorities tried to work out the best solution, the driver waited for instructions. Down there, got to replace the tank. The tank's full up with diesel. We're, we're talking about. Me and I were ten minutes away from hours. the vet cottage. No. We can unload the sheep within half an hour. Shall we say? We'll do that then. So off they went under escort to the veterinary college. But meanwhile, the owners had arranged to hire a new tractor unit. So as soon as that arrived, the trailer would be hitched to it and the sheep could be on their way. The really successful aspect is the fact that we haven't found anything that's merited prosecution, which we always see as a good result, because at the end of the day, if we have to prosecute somebody, it means that something's suffered. While we've been here at the hospital, we've seen some pretty terrible examples of man's inhumanity to animals. They've been shocking and upsetting in the extreme. But apart from the cruelty cases, I think the story I found most distressing was that of Bruno. He was the dog who appeared to be starving, despite his owner's best efforts to feed him. Get a lot of flack, I bet, from yeah. Yeah, well, people. Yeah, like half the estate are under the impression that I sort of starve him. Really? Yeah. And it's like funny RSPCA, I'll get them down. Yeah. yeah. David did some tests, and this week, Bruno was back. Well, Bruno doesn't look any uh, better. No, he's actually lost weight. Lost weight? Yeah. What have you been feeding him? Uh, top brands of dog foods. I've even tried him on steak. He ate that? No. Yep. No effect? No. Yeah, I still have like, sort of nightmares about losing him. So he's just, the weight's just dropping off him. Yeah. yeah. Let's no, see I'll what the vets have to say yeah. in here about it. I still have problems on the estate. Yeah? Yeah. David? Hello there. Bruno again. Oh, hello, yes. How are you getting on? Uh, not very well by the looks of things. No, he's lost some more weight. He's lost? Yeah, another kilo. Has he? Oh, that's not so good. Have, um, have you managed to give the pills? Yeah, he's had the whole course. No problems? No. Good. And what about the diet? Have you brought along the, the thing, the yep. piece of paper that he has now? What's, is he eating well at the moment? Yeah. No vomiting? No, he had a bit of the runs this morning. But Did he? Fine. Well, let's have a look at him then. Oh, no oh. vomiting, you say? No. A bit of the runs this morning. Yeah. No. Okay. His legs are very shaky, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a real worry. Let's have a look. Bruno, isn't it? Yep. Oh, you're a good dog, aren't you? And his appetite, how would you describe that? Uh, it's ravenous. Like ravenous. He'll, he'll eat anything and everything. Yeah. And I put him on tin stuff, steak. He's had meat. Yep. No, it didn't upset his tongue. No. It didn't make him better either. No. Right. Let me have a feel of his tongue then. How'd you get? Stand up. Because he was there was a time when he was vomiting a lot, but that we sold that, haven't we? Yeah. That was that was a couple of months yeah. ago. He's got bad shakes. Mm. I think what we should do, he's, he's really quite poorly, I think we yeah. should have him into the hospital now. Right. And uh, plan a campaign will be, we'll, we'll, um, we'll feed him yeah. and uh, monitor that very carefully. Uh, we'll take some more blood samples. Um, and then I'll do some absorption tests. Yeah. And then the final tests we can do, if we still have got to the bottom of it, yeah will be to do a biopsy of a bit of his gut because the blood sample we sent off suggested that there's a problem in the last part of his intestine. Yeah. So the logical thing to do as the last test will be to take a snippet out of that and see whether there's any reason why he shouldn't be absorbing the food. Yeah. I the think it's fair to warn you though that um, because he's not doing very well mm -hmm. it might end up that he's, you know, can't be helped. So we'll, we'll do our best, that's all we can yeah. say. We'll do our best to try and sort out first the diagnosis, yeah. and then secondly, if we can do anything about it. Okay, let's have the old boy in then. 
Help him down. Hello, honey. Bruno. Shush, shush. What's this, babe? Bruno, come on. Oh, the good boy. Nice. Come on. Come on, try it, babe. Come on. Come on, please. Come on. Come on. Bruno? No? Okay, honey. You leave it with you. The tests aren't completed yet, but as you can see, Bruno is a very, very sick dog. Sad, isn't it? During the day, this area here is buzzing, but at night the hospital is all but empty, except for the ambulance drivers who provide a round-the-clock emergency service. Steve joined them on the night shift. The first emergency that came in was a fairly common one. A very distressed elderly lady had rung for help because her dog was bleeding heavily. Vet Jeremy Stewart was on night duty and he came to have a look at her. Um, she's not walking properly as well, is she? Yeah, we said. Quite nasty, uh, what would appear to be flea allergy, isn't it? She, she's, ble she's actually she's bleeding, bleeding from the back of the shoe. Has she been seized recently? She hasn't been used to She doesn't know. She doesn't know. I think it's very likely from just the history um, that this is likely to be uh, an infection in the womb. It's, it's quite a common problem in all the dogs. Mm. Is it something that can be treated? It's a very serious condition. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the, the, it, it tends to be um, surgery is, is necessary, and, and particularly when it's as severe as this. Mm. Yeah, poor wee thing. You're not oh, feeling so well, is she? Jeremy put the dog on a drip and settled her down for the night. In the morning, she'd be ready to have her operation. On the stroke of midnight, the next patient arrived. Although her owner was camera shy, he agreed to let us film his rather extraordinary pet. Right, okay. Are you uh, able to handle her? Yes. Perfect. Okay, let's um, pop her out. Let's have a look. Goodness. Now, you are going to be more experienced at sort of handling her than I am. What, when you feel her coat or her skin, does it feel dry to you? No, this is how I was supposed to feel. But, but this, this is um, yeah, not this sort of drier than, than you'd normally expect. Right, this is no. perfect. I lost a male. Right. He was like this for about a week. Right. I got home tonight, had a look at her. Right. And the first thing I saw was her belly up. Right. And her head to one side, which was characteristic of the male. Right. But I basically don't know if it's airborne or not, because I keep other snakes as well. Right, OK. What are you looking for, Jeremy? Well, I'm just seeing if I can see any signs of um, any breathing problems, whether um, she <coughs> might perhaps be um, blowing any bubbles out of her nostrils or out of her mouth at all. Um, looking at the eye, which seems to be really quite clear, um, there's not a film over it or anything like that. And the rest of her, this, can we just try mm -hmm. and have a look at the rest of her? Mm. And I, I have extremely little or limited experience of, of yeah. snakes and, and big snakes like this. I mean, I've, I've only really ever seen them. I can t I can um, have a look at her. And, and when you say that she had a belly up, which, which all of it or just the whole lot of her up to here? Yeah. Right. It seems to be you can feel it there. Mm. It's actually a lump there. But there's no chance of her having had anything in the cage that she might have eaten, sort of like a, a no foreign body stuck or anything like that. No, the only thing that's in her, the, all my snakes kept simple, water bowl, that's it. Right. And the water bowl's not missing? No, it's still there. Okay. It's a big lump, so... Right, yes, yeah, so, so... I think, really, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to help you very much here, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, there's, there's nothing obvious that I can, that I can do. But I think, really, you're going to have to um, seek some expert advice 
and I think really you ought to do that as soon as possible. Um, now I can I can give you some telephone numbers of some people that will be able to help you, you could. but uh, you are going to have to um, pay for a, a private veterinary mm -hmm. surgeon's opinion. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's going to be expensive, but uh, I, mean, I think that's really a, cons a consequence that we have to accept when you when mm -hmm. you take on these these animals. The snake and her owner were sent on their way. The next call was from a woman who'd run over a cat. She thought it was hurt, but it had crawled off into some bushes. Unable to find it, she called the hospital for help. Yeah, and then it went this direction, and then I lost it because I couldn't see. It was too dark, so. It was three o'clock in the morning when ambulance driver Jackie Holcroft met up with her on a large area of derelict lands alongside an East End railway line. What colour is it? Black. <laughs> That's all we need, eh? That help, doesn't it? Yeah. Was it badly hurt, do you think? The back legs were, were literally, you know, dragging. Really? So I, I couldn't leave it like that. Yeah. I had to do something. Did you have a, did you have a chance to grab it or no, anything? No, I didn't. No, yeah. it was just too fast. It hissed at me and then it ran. There was no sign of the injured cat, although Jackie searched the area as well as she could. The needle in the holster. Mm. I mean, the best thing that you could do is, I, I really don't think we're going to find it, is you could have a look tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we could spend tomorrow. all night looking and, no, I don't think we're going to find it. Yeah. There's so many little areas it could have packed itself away. I'm not working till six, so I'll come during the day and look when it's light. Oh, back to the hospital then. Is that gate open there? I might just have a, just a quick look yeah. while we're here. <coughs> <coughs> it's on forever, doesn't it? Shadow. Shadow? Suddenly, she spotted something in the gloom, but it was just a black plastic bag. So, an unsatisfying end to a typical call-out on the night shift. They never did find that cat, and it wasn't for want of looking. Will you rabbits stop that thumping? Stop it! <laughs> now for a couple of bits of news. Right back at the beginning of the series, we filmed a swan that had its wing frozen into the ice on a canal. The wing was irretrievably damaged and had to be amputated. Now Harold, that's what they called him, Harold is fit again. That's him in the yellow bag. And earlier this week, he went with a group of his new friends from the Swan Sanctuary to be released on a private lake where he's going to spend the rest of his life. And then there was Gizmo with a slip disc. Remember the little dog that underwent complicated spinal surgery at the Royal Veterinary College? That was a month ago, so we thought we'd pay him a visit. He trotted out to meet us. A dog's a dog, and it's a friend for life, so you've got to do what you can for him, and that's it. He's fine, he's back to normal, back to himself, so just get on with it and just hope it don't happen again. That's great, isn't it? And we had a visitor here at the hospital. The first time she came in, she looked rather different. Come on, Pat. Oh, no, that's awful. Look at that. Oh, my God. All right. Good that's morning. a familiar face there. Yes. Yeah, it's snowy, isn't it? It's snowy. Is this one of the yeah. outfits that were sent in? Yep, that is. Oh, what a lovely that's present. Just one of the many. Wait. Shall I unbuckle it? Are you okay? Right. You can hold us. She's very really wriggling now, isn't she? Oh, she is. She's full of life. Full of life. Right, yep. so we, uh, we are. do a twirl there. On that. She's really yeah. changed colour, hasn't she? The hair's grown beautifully though, hasn't it? At least it's no more just skin to hold. No, she like a little pink pig before, like she's all coffee yeah. coloured. That's right. It's grown very well. What do you reckon she, uh, we said a poodle for a poodle type, yeah. but it's more like a Bedlington Terrier, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was hard to tell at first. She's so many mats, we couldn't tell for certain. Um, but <coughs> looking at her now, it's got more of a... Of a Bellington shape to her, really. Yeah. No? Yes. Maybe a yeah. Bellington poodle cross or something. Yeah. It's hard to tell for certain. But 
But you've got more of a Beddington hind legs there. But do you reckon she'll totally be brown eventually, or will it be brindle colour? Well, the, 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 whatever the damage has been, wherever the inflammation has been, it seems to have grown back brown. We even had her eyes and ears there, you can see. Yep. <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think Snowy likes you at all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure of that. <laughs> After all that treatment she had, or the bad treatment she's had, it was so sort of surprising to see the way she responded to us. Um, How's her skin getting on on the back here? She was itching a bit here, wasn't she, last week? Yep, no more at all, really. That's fine, did very well. She's only got one place just under... under there. That so she, one little raw but, patch. I mean, a little nibble, is she? Yeah. yeah. And scratching, but... Uh, yeah, she's <laughs> very well. Hold still. Well, she recovered extremely well from the mange. I mean, the mange, just, I don't know, in a week or two, was gone completely. Just, yeah. you know, went like that, really. Yeah. It's amazing. You're because losing weight, are you running around with her? <laughs> around about four pounds, I've lost so far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so she's, she's gained it. Yeah. Yeah, she's a normal body weight now. She's got the um, normal weight of a poodle type dog, anyway. Mm. And she's um, right. putting up some nice muscles there, too, isn't she? You can see some <coughs> muscles. Yeah, stop. Yeah, stop. Just relax for a minute. Just relax. That's it. It's, it's nice to be working here. I mean, he gets a lot of hard, yeah. hard oh, heartache, do. but you see things right. that can do so well yeah. as well. It's lots of lovely. Well, what a wonderful. Uh, Wonderful end to a story, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yes. The awful way it started out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, thousands of you phoned in to offer Snowy a home after her first appearance on the program. In fact, Mr. Cowie, who was originally fostering Snowy, is now the legal owner. And as you saw, they are quite besotted with one another. Well, this is the last show of the series. Boo! <laughs> But we will be back for another series in the autumn. Hooray! <laughs> so our thanks to Chief Vet David Grant and his team here for letting us, as it were, look over their shoulders. And thanks to you for all your wonderful cards and letters and the presents you've sent, particularly for Snowy. I must say it's just been overwhelming the way that you have taken us to your hearts. Thank you for that. Snowy has actually become quite a celebrity. And earlier this week, she was invited to go to a school to collect some money that they were donating to the RSPCA. So I'll leave you with that. Till the autumn then, bye. Anybody recognise the dog? Is that here? What's the dog's name? This is the tale of two old adversaries. The fox and the rabbit. A tale of hunter and hunted, a tale of survival, but who is the one at risk? A tale of the big bad fox, Wildlife on One returns to Thursdays on BBC One. Welcome to Chicago Home, a hospital with a reputation it won't surrender. What the hell are you doing? Step back, doctor. I will not step back. Dr. Thurman, step back now. Built on sacrifices no one will forget. His heart feels broken. Maybe his wife filed, huh? Where progress can bring hope, but no guarantees. Well, I've never done this operation before where both babies live. Nobody's dying tomorrow. The Cost of Living at Chicago Hope. An award-winning production new to BBC One. BBC Two is shifting into top gear in a moment to compare Britain's classic hot mini with the latest one from Italy and to try out a new racing car that's designed to feel old. Here on BBC One there's a case to be answered in and out of court in Crown Prosecutor. <laughs>